Linda Hayes, Director of the Sidgwick Senior Center and Council of Aging. Welcome back to our third segment of Seniorities, our program discussing and addressing issues and concerns around seniors in Situate and promoting the activities and events at the Senior Center and services at the Senior Center. Uh, with me again today is J.D. Miller, our current chairperson of our Board of Directors for the Council on Aging, and also our topic and guest for today, Jenny Gerbis, um, our Outreach Coordinator for the Senior Center. Thank you. So I'll just jump right in. Um, Please. Thanks. <laughs> I'm, my name is Jenny Gerbis. I work part-time down at the Council on Aging, the Senior Center, and I do outreach and outreach services and referrals. Uh, today I figured we would talk about six, some of the six, six main things that I do down there is part of uh, benefits and discounts for seniors. Um, I will focus mostly on folks that are over 60 and the benefits that are for them. Um, so today I was gonna go over um, one benefit is fuel assistance, SNAP food stamps in the uh, food pantry, some transportation, Shine, which is uh, helps with insurance, some tax credits for the town of Situate. So the first piece. Yeah, so Jenny, well, sorry. Start, start with fuel assistance. Yep, yeah, so the first Go piece. Slow. First piece <laughs> is fuel assistance. Uh, that's a service that's offered through the South Shore Community Action Council, and they are in Plymouth. What What's good for uh, the folks in town is that they don't have to go to Plymouth. They can come to our office and make an appointment and then come down and we'll go over all the supporting documents that they need. And I then make copies and we take care of the postage and send that down to Plymouth for folks. Usually that's kind of where it ends with me, but Social Community Action will contact the client if they need further uh, documentation. And what is the best reason for them to make an appointment with you? Right. Because they, they do require uh, quite a bit of information. So what they, they we need driver's license um, or Massachusetts ID. We need income for the last 30 days for everyone that is over 18. We need information on housing, whether you rent or whether you own your home. We need information on your uh, main source of heat, be it gas, oil, wood, pellet stove, and then a secondary heat source, which would be usually a national grid for you know your electric. electric. Right. I mean, some people heat with electric, yeah. and so then you know that would be just that one piece. Yeah. Um, so Usually, Jenny, if I come down, do I need to make an appointment with you to do this? Yeah, because I we'd we'd probably talk on the phone first, find out what you know the criteria is. Uh, if you rent, we need a rent receipt. If you own your home, we need like either a um, a mortgage statement or there's a form that if you do not have a mortgage anymore, um, they would like to know if you have homeowners insurance. And there's a, it's a, it's kind of financially based. So, for a family of one, you, the uh, the guidelines are uh, for eleven thousand eight hundred dollars, and that goes up to thirty four thousand dollars for a family of one. And that's household income. Correct. Okay. Gross. Yep. Okay. And so for a family of two, it's sixteen thousand to forty four thousand. Um, if you are, if folks are over that, there is another program that we can use. Um, but just to touch back with this social community action, the benefit is from four hundred to eight hundred dollars, and that is um, that's a federally they're a federally help me yeah. federally, federally, funded? federally funded program. Okay. Um, so the mm -hmm. benefits, you know, as more money comes like the they just were increased so i was notified by a client that they originally had uh, a 700 dollars benefit and then it just went up they mm -hmm. gave them an additional 120 dollars okay. so that's great i yep. mean that really you know that really helps during the winter time yeah it's another 50 60 gallons of fuel yes yep i mean it's it's a great benefit um more people should take advantage of it if you are under 60 if there's you there's 
no reason why you shouldn't come contact us. Uh, my co-worker Laura kind of tends to work with the folks under 60, but we encourage everyone to give us a call. I could walk folks through it if they feel like they're uh, close to those numbers. I always say, let's sit down, let's apply, let them be the ones that determine whether you're eligible or not. Um, so if I walked in mm -hmm. and had an appointment and we had everything in place, yes. how long does this take? 30 days. Okay. Yeah, it's about 30 days. Okay. They go down, it, it, all the paperwork goes down, they um, and you're, you're verify your you're awarded a, a dollar amount, which then can be translated into... Fuel? Whatever, whatever service, whatever fuel yep. service you need. Correct. Okay. They, uh, it's paid directly to the vendor, so okay. yep, that's kind of a, you right. Know, that part of it is um, seamless for yep. them. Yeah. So you don't hand the money over to me. No. You're paying. If the I vendor. if I've been given a five hundred dollars stipend for oil, you're paying a, a vendor five hundred dollars. Correct. And they're coming to my house probably a couple of times to give me two fifty yes. and two fifty. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And they just extended the time frame for the applications. Right. Been. Yeah, it's usually April. I think, what was it, May? Is May. it May 15th now? Yeah, so that's that's great. So if you feel like that's, um, if you're in those eligibility, you know, the financial eligibility, you should definitely get in touch with us. If you're awarded this year, do you automatically sort of get consideration for next year or do you, you need to reapply you do have to reapply okay. however they will send you an application that's pre-filled okay so it's kind of it's kind of quicker yep, yep, you've got to yep. know you're already what in the system yep. yep you know what's expected if your household situation changes either someone moves in or someone moves out or someone yep, isn't working sure. anymore we just correct that on the um, application okay. and this goes right through um, for folks that are over income for social community action, the Salvation Army has a program that is called the um, Great, no wait. Good Neighbor Energy Fund? That's right. The Good Neighbor Energy Fund. And that's for folks that, um, it actually starts at 34000 for a family of one and the cap for that is 45000 For a family of two, it's 44,000 to 59,000. And that, the criteria for that is they wanna see your tax refund. Mostly, uh, if you don't do a tax refund, we can sit down and we can go over it. Uh, I can go over that with you. you it, again, it's um, monies that are coming in versus money that, monies that are going out of your home, what you're paying for, uh, what you're receiving for income in assets. Their benefit is $425, and again, that you can um, receive that every year as well. Okay, so I'm assuming I know the answer to this question, but can you do both? You actually cannot do both. I, I, that's what I was Right, no, say. yeah, right. no double dipping. Okay, <laughs> so one is through South Shore Community action. Community action, and we'll be through the Salvation Army. Correct. And you can help people with both. I do both, yes. Okay. Yep, perfect. Yep, come down. Salvation Army is for under 60 and over 60 as well. Okay. Yes. Um, so the next. Can I also oh, ask? Yeah. Yes, sir. Have you been busy with this this year? Yes. Yep. Busier than previous years? No. It, it, About the we kind of have the same group. I okay. probably will get, because once people have applied and they are eligible next you know say the, the you know pr um, year after year they get used to being able to do the paperwork themselves yep. so they don't really need you know need my help I yep. get some phone calls but I'll probably get six or seven new clients every year okay which is great okay I mean there there, I mean, we. There are so many more people that are eligible for these programs that don't yeah. take advantage of them, mm -hmm. and I really, you know, I put it in the newsletter. I put it, you know, we put it in the Mariner. That's why we're here today. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. To get the word out. out. Absolutely, get the right. word out. Yes. Right. Um, so the next piece, um, and after this, I'm going to piggyback on uh, an added benefit if you're eligible for these programs. But the next piece is the SNAP food stamps. And 
that is for folks under 60 or over 60. I, again, I focus on the folks that are over 60 and Laura does under. Um, but that is, it used to be called food stamps. And it's a simpler, it's a pretty simple application. They want to know, um, again, income and monies that are coming in and monies that are coming out. The thing about um, SNAP food stamps for folks that are over 60, so you take your gross income and any expenses that you uh, put out will increase, you know, decreases your net so you're eligible for more uh, benefit. And you're, if you have out-of-pocket medical expenses, you're the Medicare Part, um, the 104 on your Medicare Part B, your pre uh, premiums for your Medicare Part D, if you're paying for glasses or hearing aids, those are all um, You can deduct those deductions. from your gross to come up with a net number, and that net number makes you more eligible for SNAP benefit. Correct. Awesome. Um, and another piece, another good thing about the SNAP benefits, you know, because some people start off with, the, you know, the minimum is $16. So people will say, all that work, all those pay, all that paperwork, and I only get a $16 benefit. But if, but if again, if you want to, you know, if you, we can increase that if you have more or show more medical expenses that mm -hmm. are going out. That only applies for people over 60, unfortunately. Um, so expenses like living expenses yes, don't count. They do. They do count. Yes. Well, so rent. Yes. That that can come off of your. Yes. Gross right. income. Yes. Okay. So living okay. expenses. So if you are paying for fuel. Yes. Or rent. Yes, sir. And obviously prescriptions or other medical, that can all come off of your gross, gross to give you a net number. And your then your benefit will go up. Okay. Yes. And it also, if you get fuel assistance or SNAP food stamps, you will also be eligible for other discounts. There's an emergency cell phone service that you can receive through Lifeline that gives um, a person 250 free minutes on a, on a cell phone. You also can get, um, there's museum discounts with your, it's your EBT card. With your SNAP food stamps, you're um, given a card that you use at the grocery store, just like an ATM. So you just slide it through, put in your PIN, and that money's taken off your, you know, like a bank account that you have with the, um, the go with the service. Um, there's also, if you're eligible for fuel assistance or SNAP, you can get a discount. It's, don't quote me on it because it does fluctuate, but it's about a 25% discount on your gas. Columbia Gas offers it. It's a 25% discount. And National Grid will also offer you a 25% discount on your electric. So Columbia is a national gas, natural gas supplier. Correct. For, okay. So I mean that's an that's an excellent benefit, and when you know when you come in to do an application process, it's pretty much it's written on your bill. But that's why they like to have some of that information, especially fuel assistance. They want to make sure that they're giving everyone the benefits that they're entitled to if they're eligible for that one program. So I know I asked you about this on fuel system but what's the application process like is it for snap no yeah for snap it's actually it's a lot less they do ask for um, less income because they are actually plugged into the Social Security uh, database so they know they can verify your and Social you said, Security right? for yep. folks that are over 65 yep. and again if it's under 60 there's a different criteria but I mean there's a lot of folks that are again eligible for these programs they're, you know that they don't know how to do it they don't they feel like they're not eligible they feel like they don't need it but when a person has this benefit it it makes it so much easier and the stress is taken off for other things that you might need yep. so again someone needs to make an appointment with you yes does this take an hour or two hours I can whip no. through these things. Okay. <laughs> uh, the fuel assistance about I give up myself about forty-five minutes. Okay. There this is a benefits checkup. Do you use that as well yourself, or sometimes they can independently? Yes, the benefits that checkup is through um, MCOA. Yeah, the Mass Council on Aging, and 
that we have computers available that you can mm -hmm. put in. You, it asks a lot of the you know questions mm -hmm. of what's coming into the home financially, what's going out, you know, um, for payments. What are some of the asset, you know, some assets that you have? Um, so if and someone, it kind of, well, sorry. Okay, sorry. If someone puts in an app, a snap application, mm -hmm. where does it go from you? That goes to Department of Transitional Assistance. That's in Plymouth. Okay. And does this take long? That to actually no. That's that is usually they will start the process within five to seven days. Okay. And. They have a, f I mean, they have a phone number that you can call to find out the status. Where you are, yeah. Yeah, because it's kind of run by your social security number. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's. So, so maybe in a couple of weeks, if someone puts in a SNAP application, they're going to get receive a, an answer. Right, okay. and for both those benefits, there's also a component for emergency. Um, there's emergency fuel assistance, and there's emergency SNAP food stamps for people. So. And those can usually be done. Those More can be credited. Yeah. yeah, they can be credited within a day or two. Okay. So I mean, we don't want people to be without yeah. heat. Yeah. We don't yeah. want people to be without food. Yeah, when it's an um, emergency, you can't you can't wait thirty days. Right. So I mean, they and they're they're wonderful to work with. I can't say enough good things about the people either down in Plymouth for fuel systems or the people down in Plymouth for the um, mm -hmm. the SNAP food stamps. Mm -hmm. Um, I wanted to touch base on the other, you know, couple other things that we have. Mm -hmm. We have a food pantry in situ. That's amazing. Um, it's Tuesdays from 10:45, no, 10 o'clock to 12:45. There's um, some great folks up there. Mm -hmm. You would, it's open to anyone. It's to at lodge, right? It's yeah, the Satua so Lodge. The on Country Way. Yeah. Satua Lodge. The Mas yeah, it's a Masa Masa the Masonic Temple. Masonic, Masonic, yeah. Masonic Lodge. The Masonic Temple right on Country Way. Yeah. Um, and then on the third no, the last Tuesday of the month evening. It's has evening hours for folks that work. But again, the food pantry, they they um, it's just a quick application. There's a like a interview that you would go with just to, you know, just to okay. touch base with the um, the counselors there. The mm -hmm. the, the food the pantry is a, a wonderful benefit that mm -hmm. benefit that's here in Situate. Also, for seniors lunches. The seniors lunches. We've got. Yeah, why don't you talk about that? Because you're up there. Just you're you go to the lunches more than I do. Uh, Social elder services at this time and, and for some years really has sponsored and provided three day a week lunches up at housed simply at the Methodist Church on First Parish Road from 12 o'clock to approximately 1 o'clock. It's a small um, a small donation, maybe a couple of dollars, I think, mm -hmm. maybe three dollars, actually. Is that, I think that's right. Sorry. Um, but that's very nice. They also do Meals on Wheels out of the same location, and that is something, again, you go through Social Elder Services to subscribe to. Um, they also... Uh, they also, what do I want to say, solicit their own volunteers and actually are in need of volunteers for Meals on Wheels. Yeah. It is a little bit too bad that we aren't involved yet in that process, but it is certainly... Meals on Wheels is seven days, five days a week. Five days a week. Sometimes they right. would provide for a weekend. They do, yeah. Uh, on Fridays, if you put in an order, they'll, they'll if you make that deliver request. for Saturday and Sunday. Awesome. The number yeah. for that is direct to Social Elder Services, 848-3910. Uh, that's teamwork. <laughs> right. Uh, someday, certainly, it would be nice to have that a little bit more under the umbrella of the Senior Center, but at this time, Social Elder Services does a great mm -hmm. job, and certainly there are several volunteers already working with them, and you know, having that check in the home for some of our more at-risk or remote seniors that need that service. Yeah. And then, uh, lastly, I guess at this point, there is a Thursday lunch that's produced by volunteers at the Congregational Church on Country Way. Very well attended, enjoyable, yeah. lively crowd, um, yeah. wonderful volunteers who do the cooking and serving there and occasionally provide entertainment, I think, too, on the piano. Yeah. Uh, that, I'm not sure that even requires a reservation, and that is maybe no. a $5 fee for lunch. Once a week? Once a week, every okay. Thursday. Right. And we as Methodist the Senior Church Center, is, is three times a week, Monday, okay. Wednesday, Monday, and Wednesday, Friday. Friday. Well. We do provide transportation to any of those yeah. uh, through the Senior Center. Uh, through Jean, the transportation coordinator, or any of us. Uh, 
And then lastly, I guess. Well, yeah, we also have a community dinner. That's for everyone in the town. Monthly. Um, that's monthly. It's on the fourth Sunday. At also five provided by volunteers yeah. through St. Luke's. Right, and that's at St. Luke's Church at 5 o'clock. And again, we can um, offer transportation mm -hmm. to that for yep. folks that um, yep. don't drive or it's dark and they don't like <laughs> yeah. to drive at dark. <laughs> yeah. Just feel like a so ride. So it's great. Yeah. Um, what are we on? The third The third piece that I wanted to go over today um, was just yes. the... Oh. the um, Transportation benefit. Now I know Jean's going to have her own show in the future, but um, something that we have that's we've been doing a lot of down the uh, down at the senior center is the Charlie card, mm -hmm. and that's uh, that's great. Because most, if you go onto the website for the MBTA, it says that everyone has to go down to Downtown Crossing to get a Charlie card, <laughs> but we offer them at our office. And so you'd come down, fill an application, we take a photograph of you, and then we just email that all to Gatra. Gatra, and the person gets a Gatra card on one side and it's a Charlie and it's a Charlie card on the other. That's a fifty percent discount on the MBTA and the sloop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I believe it's a there's a discount with the commuter rail. Yeah. I was gonna say I I, I would guess it would be, but I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think the guess. I think the folks that are on the commuter rail, if you show that, they will get that. Um, mm -hmm. If you're purchasing your ticket mm -hmm. on the train, yeah. um, but then I also wanted to kind of I know so that's renewable every month, right? A Charlie card you've got. Well, the Charlie card we j we it, just give you the Charlie card. Then you yeah you would okay. the every year renewable. Oh okay right. Okay. Um, but I know this is. Our new the new sloop schedule. I, um, we have these down at the council. If you want to come down, we can. Um, they're also online, um, but the the sloop has been extended to go to North Situate, and it goes to Lincoln Park, and it goes to the train station, and it stops um, down at. Is what are they? Is that? I don't know. The t it used to be. The Tedeschi's? It's 7-Eleven maybe now? No, oh, still Tedeschi's. Still Tedeschi's. Yep. Oh, they still yep. call it Tedeschi's. Yep. Okay. Or the post offices? Yeah. 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 And the good thing that, so they've kind of expanded not only to North Situate, but if you were to call the sloop, they can go, they can deviate their route with a within a quarter of a mile of the main road so that's like if you live a little you know say if you live in north situate but you're not right on the route you can call and they can go a quarter of a mile off of their route to pick you up but you do need to give them um a, a heads up on that right. so they can kind of work there so there is a phone number to call and that's in the brochure right. but and primarily the provision was made um, for those who can't get to the route for whatever you know yeah. whether it's um, because of a disability or another reason right. and uh, that was a nice yeah. plan oh. to come up yes. with Absolutely. right yes yeah it's it's, it's great mm -hmm. we have a lot of people that are taking advantage of it mm -hmm. and uh it's great 50 cents <laughs> yeah. can't beat that for no. a ride that's right not uber yeah <laughs> um some of the tech Right. So the uh, one of the other things that we have um, for the with the town, and this is more like of a town hall, uh, a, a town hall benefit, a uh, tax benefit. But I will, I will refer folks to that if I, you know, if I meet with somebody mm -hmm. and I see that there's um, that they're financially eligible for the, some of these programs, I will encourage them to go up to town hall. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, we're getting very close to the time where the where the um, tax information is needed by the town mm -hmm. to uh, get these benefits for uh, this tax year. However, we've been trying to get the word out. You know, we talk about it like say probably every other month or every three months, mm -hmm. just to give folks the um, information that mm -hmm. the circuit there's a circuit breaker benefit. Mm -hmm. It's a discount. Um, mm -hmm. I believe. Let me get my glasses on. It's a five hundred dollar L exemption for folks over 70 now this is on your taxes on the taxes yep yep, yep. Um, and it reduce it does reduce your local property tax liability for seniors but 
there these are seniors that are over 70 mm -hmm. there's another one that is a 175 dollar elderly exemption that is for anyone over 70 and it also applies for anyone that has lost a spouse um there's a there is an asset limit but the um the elderly exemption is you'd get a hundred and seventy five dollars mm -hmm. and a hundred and seventy five dollar for mm -hmm. surviving spouse hmm. there's also um, a tax deferment that is for folks 65 and over um, again there is income and asset um, criteria that you need to meet however that would that would enable a person to defer their taxes mm -hmm. um, Defer paying their de taxes. De defer right? paying their taxes. So they'll and file with the IRS. Yes. Yep. But you can defer payment. You can defer payment, okay. and when your house is sold, or someone, you know, if you, if someone inherits it, or the house is sold, there is a um, eight percent. What is it? It's a it's a eight percent interest, or a lien on your home mm -hmm. when it's sold. Um, again, this is information that the town so hall knows office. this. Yeah, yeah they you know can this go straight inside there and out. Directly, you can come to us for help. Yep. But, but they would be happy to help as well at the assessor's office. Right. You know, sometimes when information it's certainly confidential, any of it that's discussed. Right. And absolutely. we have had them at the senior center um, to provide right. that information as well, or mm -hmm. just to be there to be able to have someone talk with them directly. Right. And they deal with this all the time. Right. And, and they're happy. Their are seven eight one five four five eight seven one two, and again, they're they're great to. Um, that's town hall, or that's the assessor's that's office? the town uh, the town hall assessor's office. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's um, I mean, those are great okay. benefits, as well. You yeah. know, to. You got to ask questions. So. Yeah, you I know. Ask questions. Well, I always say you don't know what you don't know. Right. <laughs> There's uh, stuff, there's stuff out there, benefits out there that people need to know about, but they got to ask the questions. Mm -hmm. Right, that's so true. Right. Yep. Um, so, housing. one other thing that I that I help folks with, and I assist um, with, where the we have the three elder um, senior housing. senior housing through the situate senior housing. Wait, housing authority. Housing authority. Right. So I keep our, I have hours over there because a lot of the folks, you know, or folks, if they don't feel like coming to the senior center, but we would like or, you to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we would love you to. But a lot of folks did that uh, either it, the sloop schedule isn't working or sure, something. Right. I will spend an, uh, half an hour to an hour at each of the housing authorities um, on Tuesdays. The first Tuesday I'm at Lincoln Park. Second Tuesday I'm at Central. And the third Tuesday, I'm at Wheeler 1, and then I go down to Wheeler 2. Her schedule is published in the newsletter for both months. Yep, yep, for our two months. And right, so if you need to see Jenny, you can see her when she's on schedule, when she's mm -hmm. on site. Right, right. And I also, I mean, I'm, I'm able to go to do home visits. I'm flexible enough that, I, you know, I know my way around town for the most part. So I she can find... She likes strong coffee. <laughs> yeah. So I don't mind going out to... To folks home we had a nice home visit yesterday um, and it's you know it, it some people are more comfortable yeah, talking yeah. about these some of these things in their home absolutely. and I understand and I'm perfectly um, perfectly willing to go out absolutely now occasionally people do call us and be refer and would be referred to you but they have questions on how to obtain housing or, or get on a list for housing what do you tell them then right um we do have some of ho some housing um, applications here. It is a, a it's a financial you know you ha it's a financial eligibility process. Um, oftentimes, I will work with Rob, who is the um, the person in, that, that kind of does my job at the housing authority, and we really try to work together and you know get people the services that they need. Um, for the two, there's Lincoln Park and Wheeler Park are state owned, and <coughs> Central Central Park is federally owned. So the two state owned properties are they have priority for people that are from Situate, and there's a priority for um, veterans. Um, 
we'll have Donald come on the mm -hmm. show mm -hmm. and he will hopefully talk about the amazing um, benefits for veterans but that is one that I am aware of so I always when I'm meeting with someone that's one of the first questions if they're if they're a veteran or um, their spouse was a veteran or is a veteran because um, that benefit goes mm -hmm. that benefit can go to either the husband or the wife so yep. that's amazing and I might take just a minute um, to also sure. mention obviously housing we are lucky to have the housing complexes that we do have and yet we know that there is still a need for affordable housing in in the town of Situate. So the housing authority is involved with a private developer at this time and they did come to the senior center, did a presentation, but really wanted us to help get the word out and in fact are having a forum for the public on Monday, April 3rd. Right. Not sure if this mm -hmm. will be airing at that point, but no. good information to have either way because it will come before town meeting on April 26th. Um, and that is when it comes up for a vote. But it's a private develop development of 30 affordable apartment rental units for mm -hmm. 62 and over seniors. And it's just the kind of thing that we have been hoping we would see more development of. And this is sort of a first project, which is approved by the CPC for using CPA funds, uh, a percentage of which is, is really required and has been saved for this purpose mm -hmm. uh, but it is called Lawson Green um, it's proposed to go in behind the current Central Park housing and land there has has is owned by the Housing Authority already for this purpose um, so it doesn't infringe on any other potential projects or the library or anything else that might go beyond that but it's a wonderful project and they do need the support of the town and seniors who might really be interested in having this kind of thing available or more available to them in addition to the current housing complexes that we we have here so did want to mention that yeah That's so there's maybe some things in the pipeline to add uh -huh. to our housing options right yeah um no that no thank you that's great information um lastly um I mean, this isn't the only thing that I do, and we will have another. We'll have another segment on home care that we'll do. But one of the other things that I do with my um, coworker Norman, who is a Shine counselor, which you're going to have to help me with that acronym. Serving the health information needs of everyone. Everyone. Exactly. Shine's really yes. easy to remember. <laughs> yeah. I just yeah. like the word yeah. Shine. That's Super a lot easier. Yeah, yes. me too. So. We have an amazing counselor that comes down to Situate once a week, Norman. He's by appointments only, um, <laughs> and he's usually fully booked. Right. He will help folks that are turning 65 and with all those questions of what to do. Should I get insurance now? Should I wait? Should yeah. I, can I get it through somewhere what else? What am I eligible for? What should I, yeah. Absolutely. He knows, he knows his stuff. He does. He will sit down with people and like really break it down. It's so much easier to understand than the bulk of um, books that you get from Medicare. Important information, but he's so, um, he's yeah. so quick and it makes it seamless for folks to come in to apply for Medicare. Mm -hmm. um, we also will do, uh, he, he, that's more his specialty. I can help folks with choosing a Part D drug plan for open enrollment, which is during the fall. Um, that's like to help with lowering folks' costs mm -hmm. for medications and um, finding, a good, finding a good plan that fits your needs and working with like say the pharmacy that you like or the pharmacy that would be the cheapest um, for you to go and that I mean we're all about saving money when you come in especially to talk about the Medicare um, we also with folks that are just on Medicare there's also a couple of different um, supplement plans they're called Medigaps we will also sit down and help folks to find a Medigap that is the the best one for them, which is usually the cheapest one. Which is which, in effect, is insurance that covers some of the gaps, i.e., Medigap, right, of your current coverage. Correct, because Medicare 
covers 80% of hospital doctors. And these Medigap plans pick up that other 20. Fill in the rest, right. Right. And folks that have Medicare and then Medigap, that's when you need a Part D. So it's kind of the triple, you know. <laughs> The, and, the it's and it's whammy. confusing. Yeah, it's, the confusing. It's, it's confusing landscape. So it is. Both it's, you and Norm are resources that people can call on to get right. some, get some guidance. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean, and again, it's a busy it's a busy time in the fall, mm -hmm. um, where you know mm -hmm. on the on the uh, Medicare website checking things out. But it's great to know, and it's a great feeling when a a person is spending. Four hundred dollars a month on medication, and I do a drug search, and we can bring it down to a hundred. <laughs> you, you know, I mean, to save them that right. much money, right. it's right. just great. Yeah. I mean, everybody yeah. is a win-win for everyone. And, and it happens. So. Oh, it does. Yes. Yeah, it does. Indispensable service. Yeah, it is. It's it's great, and it, I mean, those are the things that mm -hmm. make you know our jobs mm -hmm. so you know so yeah. easier, yeah. so fun, and. Hey, you know, talking with people and knowing that you're doing a good service. You helping know, them. It's great. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So um, hopefully seeing just how yeah. valuable, you know, it can yeah. be to come to the Senior Center and right. either access Jenny or just ask for information yeah. and or referrals. Um, and, and there's a lot you can learn. It might be easy to call and try to get an appointment with Jenny. Yeah. <laughs> But she is at Lincoln Wheeler in Central Park on certain right. scheduled days. Yeah. So you can find her there. You can find yeah. it at the, at, the, at the Senior Center. Yeah. It's all in the newsletter. Wealth letter. of information, and she might be able to help navigate certain things. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you, Jenny. Thank, Thank you. you. Jenny. No, it's been great. So happy to have you viewing as well, and um, hope this was good information as we continue. Uh, we will, again, go on to have... Jean, our transportation coordinator, and Laura, our social services coordinator, and Lisa Thornton, our activities and volunteer coordinator in segments to come. Yeah. I did probably want to close by mentioning a few upcoming things and something that uh, Jenny and I and Laura are involved and with. And I'll mention these when you. Yeah. Is the Situate Hoarding Response Team, and there is an event coming up on Tuesday, April 11th at the Senior Center. It's in the evening on that Tuesday. Um, Supportive Approaches to Decluttering. It's a film that's very valuable, we've seen, and then also um, an overview of the hoarding disorder and related research and just a discussion of the fundamentals and some of the resources that can be used to help those uh, grappling with that issue. So we do hope the community is invited, anyone who wants more information or uh, might be interested in finding resources to help them. Again, April 11th. Uh, in addition, we have our Zumba Gold Dance Class, which is, um, has been meeting in the afternoons at St. Luke on Wednesdays and now is moving to the mornings beginning April 5th at 9.15 to 10. It's a $5 class, great instructor, great exercise. Um, might mention also that we're starting a trail walking group, and there's a meeting about that on April 12th at the Senior Center oh, at 9 a.m. Go. We have a couple of writing classes starting on April 6th. There are two different kinds of activities. One is a expressive writing sort of sharing group, and the other is writing memoirs class. So That's they're in the newsletter, or you can just call the center for more information. Okay. Uh, lastly, I might mention a movie uh, scheduled for April 12th. We do Friday movies twice a month. This is one that grandparents could bring their grandchildren to. Finding Dory, which is the sequel to Finding Nemo. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> so we provide it all, refreshments, popcorn, yes. and we'd love to have um, your company for that day as well. Friday at what time? Noon. noon. Finding Dory. Friday at noon. Finding Dory. Cool. Uh, so any other questions or topics you'd like us to cover in the future, please call the Senior Center. Uh, we'd love to, to do that for you. And... Um, just uh, appreciative of your watching, and I don't know if you have anything well, else to I, add. Well, Jenny reminded me, thank fans. you very much. Oh, um, the Situate Rotary Club has Yay. published its 2017 phone book, Situate phone book. Um, there, most people should have gotten something in the mail. It, it was delivered to most homes in mm -hmm. town, but there are locations you, you can pick up another book or a book 
starting at the senior center you can pick up some there are some extras down there there are extras in should be some extras at, at Greenbush Post Office, First Parish Post Office, North Sichuan Post Office, and I think also there should be some at Town Hall. So anybody who needs or would like uh, a phone book, um, you can, if you haven't already gotten one, uh, and please, please take a look at our advertisers and, <laughs> and give them and, yeah. and provide them some business if you need some help. So right. the Citroen Rotary phone book is is out and available. Oh, yay. Thank you, J.D. Okay. Yeah. I guess that's all for us today. All for, all for seniorities for Thanks today. Thanks so much. J.D. Miller, I'm a uh, member of the board on the Council on Aging, chairman of the board. Thank you. Jenny Gerbis, outreach coordinator at the Council on Aging. Thank you. And Linda Hayes, director of the Senior Center on Council on Aging.